this is another rational inequality. We have a fraction greater than or equal to a fraction plus one. I use the word rational. In fact, one is an integer and also a rational number because one can be written as one over one. Okay, back to this business. What's the first step? The first step, just like a nonlinear inequality, we want to move all the terms to the left hand side. So let's do that. We have x divided by x plus 2 minus 1 divided by x minus 1 and then we subtract 1 we have everything greater than or equal to 0. Let's get a common denominator and then I will claim the left hand side to be my function. So for the common denominator the I will use x times 2 x minus 1 so x plus 2 did I say x times 2 x plus 2 x minus 1 so this is x times x minus 1 minus 1 times x plus 2 so for negative 1 then you will have to subtract the product x plus 2 and then x minus 1 you have the whole thing greater than or equal to 0. Wow this thing we have to take a look at what that equals to. Okay we have x squared minus x right we have x squared minus x and then we have minus x minus 2 minus x minus 2 and then we have to subtract the product of these two factors okay let's do that um this is a x square minus x plus 2x minus 2 and then can we do one more step further uh, should I squeeze that over here or I, I should move that over to, to, to the other side? I would just do, do it right here. Okay, so we have x squared minus 2x minus 2 and then uh, minus x squared. This is a negative 1 plus 2 which is a positive x but you have a minus in front of that minus x and then plus 2. So the 2's got cancelled, right? So this 2 and this 2 got cancelled and what else? the x squared got cancelled as well. So we have a negative 2x subtract x, then we have a negative x, we have a negative 3x, did I say negative x? Negative 3x divided by, what else? Negative 3x divided by the common denominator, x plus 2, and then times x minus 1, greater than or equal to 0, and then I am going to claim this as my fraction sorry, as, as my function. I'm going to claim this as my f of x. Huh, I missed a 1 in here, right? x minus 1. Oh, I did not miss the 1 that makes this look like a plus. Minus 1. And then I claim this to be my function. Now, for rational inequality, most of the time, you will get a rational function as the fraction. Now, when you set that equals to zero, you might say, okay, we multiply the denominator on both sides and we only have negative x equals to zero. Uh, that is right, but for rational inequality, you have to take care of the numerator and denominator. So when you let that equals to zero, you have to take care of negative 3x equals to zero, x plus 2 equals to zero, and then x, e x minus 1 equals to zero. So the key numbers are x equals to 0, x equals to negative 2, and x equals to 1. They are my key numbers. Key numbers. And then you put the key numbers on the number line to construct your test intervals. You have a negative 2, you have a 0, you have a 1, one line, three numbers, you cut this line into four pieces negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 0, from 0 to 1, from 1 to positive infinity. You have your negative infinity to negative 2, and then you have your negative 2 to 0, and then you have your 0 to 1, and then you have 1 to positive infinity. And then the test value, so let's uh, match the color that I used to set up this problem. I think this is the right color x equals to negative 3, just pick a value within the interval, x equals to negative 1, x equals to this one, you have to pick a 0.5, and then this one, I will just pick x equals to 2, and then I claim this to be my fraction, the next step is you plug in each test value 
to the function to see which one is greater than or equal to zero. Or you plug in each test value to the original inequality to see which one is satisfied. And then you pick the one that is satisfied, right? Just two different ways to do it. So we have f of negative three. So f of negative three, that is a negative three times negative three divided by negative three plus two multiply negative three minus one. What is that? That is a uh, nine divided by four, right? Nine divided by four. And then this is a positive. Are we looking for positive? Yep, this is greater than or equal to zero. And then f of negative one, you have your ne negative three times negative one divided by negative one plus two and then negative one minus one. That one I have three over negative two. This is less than zero, we do not consider that. And then f of 0.5 equals to negative three times 0.5. And then denominator 0.5 plus two, 0.5 minus one. That one gives you negative 1.5 divided by negative 1.25. I don't need to know what that equals to. All I need is that is greater than or equal to zero. And then the last one, f of 2, you have negative 3 times 2 divided by 2 plus 2, also 2 minus 1. This is a negative 6. The bottom is a positive 4. This is less than zero. We don't need that because as always, look at this. We are looking for greater than or equal to zero. The greater than or equal to sign is from right over here. Greater than or equal to zero. And then now we have our interval. We are looking for the first interval and the third interval. So they are my solution sets. And then I draw a conclusion. I say solution sets, solution sets. And then draw the number line again. We have a uh, negative two, and then uh, from zero to one, from zero to one, do we have an equal? Yep, we have a greater than or equal to, take a look at the very beginning, we have greater than or equal to zero. So when you draw the arrow, I have to include, this is a negative two, right? This is a negative two. You have to include your negative two, and then what else? between zero and one, okay, so between zero, and then between one, and then we, we, we do this. So this is from negative infinity to negative two, and then, oh, huh, from negative two, square bracket, and then union, square bracket, from zero to one, and then the inequality is x less than or equal to negative two, zero less than or equal to x, less than or equal to one. If there is no equal, then this is an open circle, open circle, open circle. They are all parentheses, and there is no equal in the inequality. Uh, what is the union mean? Let me make this uh, look like a square bracket for you. So square bracket. The union means every time you select an x value, the x value is either in this interval or in this interval. That's why they use the word union. Union means or. Uh, you, or you can use the, use the word or, or you can just draw a comma. And then one other question that you might want to ask me is, hey, uh, back to your test interval, you did not use a square bracket. That it is okay. You don't have to use square bracket in the test interval. You can just imagine that there is no equal. But at the end, when you present your solution set, you always have to go back to the problem make sure there is an equal, and then you use solid circles. All right, uh, that is the end of this video. If you like the way I teach rational inequality, give me a thumbs up, a subscribe. I will meet you all in the next lesson, signing out.